Hey folks, uh, good morning. So I'm super excited to show you this new telescope. This is called uh, Celestron Rho Ackerman Smith's Astrograph. The main purpose of this telescope is to take pictures. Uh, it's like hyperstar and only hyperstar, nothing else. Think of that way. So this telescope does not have any visual uh, eyepiece kind of thing in the back. Actually, in fact, there is nothing in the back. It just has a fan to cool this thing and also a couple of locks to focus lock. On the front, so in the front, you place your camera and connect your camera to the computer and start taking pictures. This is actually a Celestron 11 inches SCT, which is converted into like a Rasa. So I was debating between 11 inches Celestron because I wanted to, so I've been using Celestron 8SE with Hyperstar combination for the last one year. So I was thinking to upgrade from 8SE to 11 and uh, I thought maybe I wanted to give Rasa a try. So long story short, the Rasa is by Celestron and Hyperstar is by another third party company called Starizona. So long time ago Celestron used to have a thing called uh, Fast Star. So they pretty much try to do the Fast Star compatibility kind of telescopes but somehow kind of they deviated. Um, Hyperstar came into existence by Starizona. Dean created that whole thing. Um, you know, I've been in touch with him all the time. And uh, I've been using Hyperstar for a while. Now, I uh, wanted to give this new thing a try. So this is from Celestron. It, the application is pretty much the same. I guess the image circle is a little wider or a little bigger on Rasa, that's what I was told. And also it gives you like uh, edge to edge kind of round stars. I, did, I need to check all that. So a friend of mine in Colorado, he bought this telescope and uh, he takes pictures of terrestrial objects like sceneries and stuff. He didn't want this and he wants to sell it. Um, so I said like, yeah, I love this stuff. So I went to Denver, uh, I flew to Denver and then I drove back from Colorado to Texas like in one day and a weekend literally without any music on, just thinking about this telescope. Uh, this telescope is heavy, it's 48 pounds, it's a big telescope. So I was thinking to get a CGX mount for this one. CGX mount can hold like 45 pounds or 55 pounds, something like that. CGXL does 75 pounds. So I just don't want to max out on the day one this being 48 and putting it on 55 but Celestron sells Rasa on the CGX so but CGX L I was thinking gives me that additional 20 capacity uh, if I have to expand they also have this thing uh, this orange uh, last Modi dovetail on the top as well I took that off because uh, that's like 5.5 pounds more and you can place a lot of things on the top but really speaking, other than the guide camera and uh, camera, I don't want to place anything right now. So from a weight perspective, I took it off, that one. I see no use of that one. It has a camera in the front. I am right now using one shot color camera. You can also put a filter wheel, like a slider filter wheel, like a manual slider filter wheel. Starizona sells them. And there is also a spacer that you need between the filter wheel and uh, the camera. Uh, you can get that from Starizona too. But anyway, uh, it, it has this mount has 22 pound weights. I put two of them. If when you get the mount, you only get one weight. So I got two weights on this one. I need to test it out, see how this thing works. Uh, I'm not an expert yet. I'll uh, post videos as I go along. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to take this. Uh, Everybody is talking about this new comet called. Uh, Comet 46P, it's a Christmas comet. It's a green blob kind of thing. You know the difference between the asteroids and comets, right? So asteroids are this big 
chunk of rock or metal. So whereas the comets are like pile of rocks, dust, gas, water, whatever. So it's a huge piece of stuff flying through the space. Uh, this comet uh, called Christmas Comet as well comes every four years uh, right around this time and this is this time in the last 20 years coming pretty close to the earth when they say close it's actually 30 times lunar distances that is 30 times distance from the moon when you take a picture it looks like a green blob so I'm taking the picture of a comet for the very first time uh, taking a picture of comet is slightly different from the normal because you can't really stack the pictures. The stars are tracked by your mount, but comet is moving faster than the stars. So I'm pretty excited uh, to see if uh, how this thing is going to come out. Okay, let's see how I will take the picture of the comet. So if you go to this website, skylive.com, you will find information about the Comet 46P. So if you scroll down, you see the RA and the DEC. So these are like GPS coordinates. You can actually take these and put that into your Sequence Generator Pro and then navigate to this location. Here is the live view of the Comet. It's kind of a green fuzzy ball in the middle. It's so exciting looking at a comet in a live view like this. So I put 23 seconds exposure for like 50 frames. And I think that should be good enough. 23 seconds and if I expose more than that, I think I'm going to get... Uh, way too much bright light. So now the Sequence Generator Pro is going to plate solve it, navigate to that location and starts taking pictures. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. All right. So it's integrating for 23 seconds. I'm going to stack this in Pixinsight So here is my final picture. This is my first comet picture. Thanks for watching.